Hello everyone. I wanted to thank you so much for all your kind messages of support and for sharing with me all your amazing pictures. In my next videos tomorrow or the day after, I will be showing all the amazing pictures you sent me. Thank you guys. So today we're going to Amsterdam. We're going to the Rijksmuseum. And for this occasion, I have picked my favorite picture. Woodland Pond at Sunset by Gerard Bilders. This is what I have created. Let me tell you a few things before we start. If you're working with watercolor or color pencils, then work straight away on white card. If you're working with acrylic on canvas or acrylic paper or thick card, I would strongly recommend you to add a very thin wash of a transparent color. It could be maybe a brown, um, maybe an orange. I've used orange and I've diluted it with water so it is even more transparent. Um, if you're using watercolor and pencils, start with the lightest areas first, but this is what we are doing pretty much for today's painting too. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. It's a bit tricky, this painting. I have to um, I have to let you know, but to just take it at your own level. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, who cares? Also, if you click in the description below, you will be able to find the link where you can download your uh, picture of the woodlands pond at sunset by the way don't worry i'm not gonna get into trouble for breaking copyright rules because these pictures is a, of a public domain so we can download this picture as much as we can as we like as you can see i'm starting to paint this white canvas with a very thin layer of diluted orange only follow this step if you are planning to paint with acrylic paint on canvas or acrylic paper or card. If you are using watercolor pens, colored pencils or anything else, please start on your white card and skip this step. I will be using red, yellow, blue, white and black. And I'm starting by finding the horizon line. I've used a mixture of black and red, but you can also use yellow, blue and um, red. And now I'm going to find the main color of the sky. So surprisingly, the sky, it's a peach color mainly. That is because it's a sunset. And the lightest and brightest area is in the middle of our painting. So we need to make sure that we apply thick layers of paint especially where it's going to be lighter you also mustn't forget that on the painting you can see some blues and greens in the sky look on the right hand corner and mid left you can see some greens there as well next with some brown paint and a flat brush i am finding the shape of the pond I have diluted slightly my brown paint for this um, stage. That's because it's easier to drag my paint um, on a canvas and also I will be building more colors on top of this. Okay, You can create brown by mixing red or black or you can create brown by mixing red, yellow and blue. Next, we're going to find the darkest area of our foreground and once that is done we're going to add our pond so as you can see the color of the pond is an orange this is why I've used mainly red and yellow but it's not as light as the sky so I'm adding my after I've added my darkest area to my foreground I mixed some uh, yellow blue and black to create some darker green which i've applied on top of my brown wash please refer to the original picture so you can see exactly where i've added my green paint on top yes and please use a brush with rough 
or hard bristles I'm using a hog brush if you're using a soft brush you might find it quite tricky but if this is what you have at home you can use that as well it doesn't matter as long as you remember to clean your brushes after you've finished so now next I'm adding my middle ground which is the house and all those trees which you can see in the distance now remember when things are far away from us they become lighter a bit bluish and they're a bit blurry because you can't see the details so don't try and add tiny details and be too precise at this stage because it's pointless it's best if you just um, if you lose with your brush strokes so um, I'm using a brown for my house and I'm using a small flat brush actually this is a soft brush it allows me to be more uh, accurate or to work in a more especially if I'm working on a, on a smaller scale but I'm not trying to achieve perfection so I'm adding here for the trees in the background I'm adding a mixture of blue yellow and gray and from time to time I add some darker greens I just add more blue and it, it looks darker so it's not one color but actually it's a it's more a um, collection of different shades of green once this is finished then we need to think about our lightest area in the sky which is the central and we need to add our trees now so this tree that I'm painting now is the closest to us so we can be more accurate in terms of details that we want to show also the color seems to be darker usually when things are closer to us especially on a landscape um, the elements appears to be more chromatic in other words more colorful so um, um, I have slightly diluted this acrylic paint because I want to be able to drag the tip of my brush on the canvas so I can add tiny details and so you don't have to worry about copying 100% the picture and again I suggest you to download the picture you will find the link on the description of my video it's very useful you can really see um, what you need to what you can add and what type of brush strokes you can use now for the tiny trees in the background remember they're tiny because they're getting away from us they also appear to be slightly lighter slightly it's a very subtle um, change and also the branches will be will appear to be thinner than the big tree in front of us so once you have your trees down let's think about the reflection of the trees in our pond i have used a a very warm brown what, is a, what does this mean well it's a brown which has some red in it um but as long as it's slightly lighter than the actual um, tree it, it will look good okay and remember it's a reflection so it doesn't have to be 100 percent um the mirrored image of the tree next i am using this old brush which has really rough bristles and it's all you see it can't it's not really the best brush in my selection but it's great for this type of um, um it's great for this stage you just have to dab the green onto the areas of the trees don't worry if you go over the branches and you might lose them you can always go over later on and try to use different types of green not just one green remember you can add some red to your green to make it look more like an olive type of green and the trees in the background appear to be slightly lighter well at least the leaves of the trees in the background are slightly lighter 
now and again add some touches of darker green also can you see that i told you before that we might be losing some of the branches and i said don't worry because we will be finding them later on and this is exactly what i'm doing i'm just going over some of the branches not all of them i precisely i define more the branches of the trees which is closer to us remember that tree is the one which we should be seeing more accurately and i know there's about maybe five uh, ducks in the original painting but i'm just going to add two and again you don't have to be too precise when you look at the um when you look at the close-up of the original painting um, and you look at the ducks, they don't really appear to be 100% full of details. You can see Alice in the background here. So try to um, avoid adding too many details on the ducks. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please message me if you have any questions. Thank you.